All right, I'm not going to be going into so much detail for the sake of time and editing. I just wanted to get my thoughts out as quickly as possible about this film. I still have to finish part two on King of the Monsters, so this will be kept pretty short and there will be spoilers. Now then, if it wasn't for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, then Joker would be the best movie this entire year. Endgame doesn't have shit. Toy Story 4 is a lousy excuse of a sequel. Captain Marvel can go straight to hell. The Rise of Skywalker isn't going to be good. Far From Home isn't anything special. Shazam is forgettable, and you already know how I feel about King of the Monsters to be continued soon enough. And if you mention any film that can genuinely be categorized under the best movie of the year, then I've probably never seen it. And while we're on the subject of 2019 movies, why are so many of these pieces of shits already in the fucking billions? Are you people just that fucking stupid? And yes, while I'm one for shitting on retarded professional critics, the general audience is just as fucking stupid. Because based on those numbers alone, I have zero faith in the film industry anymore. And to that one guy who watched Endgame 200 times in theaters, congratulations on wasting thousands of dollars, you fucking loser. Now that my rant's done and out of the way, Joker! The only issues I had with Joker to start off with were very minimal. The lighting, Thomas Wayne's character, the back and forth on Arthur's mother felt a little bit cluttered, as in, I guess it was all over the place. The inclusion of Batman's origin story, and then Arthur's emotional outbursts towards the end. Granted, the lighting is objectively beautiful and very stylistic. I just thought it gave the impression it was a film begging for an Oscar like La La Land, for example, but it was far from that. Thomas Wayne felt felt like a cartoon, but it didn't bother me all that much with my first viewing, and then by my second viewing, I didn't care all that much. There's a lot of twists and turns when it came to Penny Fleck, Arthur's mother, and I thought it could have been kept just a tad bit more concise, and I felt like it was almost pointless considering we are told that Thomas Wayne is supposedly Arthur's father, but then it's revealed almost immediately after that he actually isn't, and Arthur is adoptive. Granted, those plot points didn't really take me out of the film for presenting them and then dismissing them, but it felt like it added a lot more to Arthur's story, and how exactly affected his mentality. So in that regard, this movie is one hell of a roller coaster. Again, if any of what I say confuses you, just note what I'm talking about are minor issues. Arthur's emotional outbursts when he is on the Murray show in the end, I found a little off-putting for the Joker, as I've never seen a Joker character to be emotional, with the exception of, say, sheer excitement, disappointment, anger, and etc. But for a character arc alone, and in the context of Arthur's character, it makes perfect sense. And then the inclusion of Batman's origins I don't think was needed, but then again. Where there's a Joker, there's a Batman. And I really do like this new take on his origins, and it now really makes it personal for both characters in the future. Now, when the Wayne name was brought up, I called it that the death of Bruce's parents would happen during the mob scene, and I felt a bit disappointed in that regard for being right. But by the end of the film, I didn't mind it all that much. I think it sets up the sequel perfectly. Also, let's talk about the love interest in this movie. She's great, and the twist with her character is genuinely heartbreaking from Arthur's point of view. He practically imagined a relationship with someone he barely talked to. God damn, this guy can't get a break. On a technicality level, I love this film. The music, while some of the tracks tended to be a bit too similar, I fucking loved. The editing was great. I enjoyed the fact how there's an opening scene with a title credit. Thank you, Todd Phillips. The violence was kept pretty minimal, but it's fucking brutal. And the humor in this film is genuinely funny. And unironically, I found myself to laugh at some of the violence. Despite this film being called Joker, it's really only the last 20 minutes where Arthur is finally the Joker character and acts like him. Granted, that could be disappointing for some people, but I didn't mind it since I watched a really great fucking movie. This is a great movie. No need for anything extra outside of it. Well written, awesome directing, great performances by everyone, awesome music, and a genuinely enjoyable film in general. That's what a great many films lack nowadays, to include the more superhero-based films. And we can't talk about Joker without some controversy, now can we? The film's fine, okay? It's not advocating gun violence, it's not promoting fucking white supremacy or whatever, and guess what? It is diverse! Just look at these people, for Christ's sake. God damn, people are dumb. This is just a simple movie talking about how the Joker came to be. That is it. It's not justifying the Joker's actions. It's explaining why he does these things. Honestly, I genuinely don't understand why people give this movie such crap. For those who say the film is fine and isn't exactly their cup of tea as their opinion, then I'm okay with that. Not everyone has to like the same thing, but to call this film outright terrible is an overstatement. And to those who are so fucking desperate for this film to bomb, fail, and cause an actual theater shooting are outright retarded. I think that, you know, Aurora is obviously a horrible, horrible situation, and, and, uh, and, 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 but even that is not something you blame on the movie. And quite frankly, if you do your own research about Aurora, that gentleman wasn't even going in as Joker. That was misreported. His hair was dyed red. He was having a, obviously, a mental breakdown, and there's something... 
um, horrifying about it, but it wasn't related to it outside of the fact that it happened at a movie theater. Hell, the fucking shooting in 2012 was from The Dark Knight Rises, and that film had nothing to do with the Joker. And considering the stupidity of the left and what they deem to be offensive or controversial, let me ask you this. Where's the public outrage when it came to Overlord? Huh? Where was the controversy behind that film? Same with the upcoming JoJo film. I haven't seen shit with that film. Nazis are like the fucking number one bait when it comes to the left. But no, it has to revolve around Joker. We live in a society where you can have a black man outright lay out his plans for mass genocide on a global scale with the mention of women and children and enslaved nations out of revenge. And people will say he has a point. You can have a man who wants to wipe out half of all life in an attempt to fix scarcity, but then flip his motivations on a dime in the next movie. And people will say he has a point. But you make one little movie about the dangers of leaving the mentally ill without care and how society becomes more disappointed with their fellow man. Well, then everyone loses their minds. Also, with the comparison to Taxi Driver, I don't give a shit. It didn't bother me. Not to mention, I haven't seen that film, so who knows. I had a fun time from start to finish with this movie. The writing I was surprised about in terms of Arthur's character arc becoming the Joker. The plot points didn't feel convoluted or all over the place, for the most part, anyway. The pacing felt really great for such a pretty short movie, and I was constantly wishing the film would not end. I didn't exactly tear up at any point in the film, but I did feel the emotional weight of Arthur continuously breaking down. Now, to be clear, I am not sympathizing with this character, nor condone his actions, obviously, but I did have a bit of a connection in regards to Arthur constantly being bashed over the head and things just not going his way. Keep in mind, this film is both directed and written by Todd Phillips, the same guy who worked on The Hangover of all movies and also War Dogs. If this man was able to direct this kind of film, then it really shows that he has grown in his craft and can practically write just about anything. Take notes, Daughtery. If anything, I hope he returns to direct the sequel, because if it's put into completely different hands, then it will fail drastically. Other films may get lucky, but with the way franchises are going now, do not give the sequel to anyone else. Keep Todd Phillips. Phillips. And speaking of which, I'm with Todd on his take with this film and comedy. He's right. You can't make comedy funny anymore without some jackass outright getting offended for no reason. But then again, he can still do it. Why? Sticks and stones, it's a thing, and look at the praise that got. But whatever. Joker gets a perfect A. If it wasn't for some of the minor things I pointed out, and possibly because of the inclusion of Batman's origins, then this would be a solid A-plus movie. I loved Joker, and I believe it should win at least one Oscar. It doesn't have to be Best Picture, but at least one Oscar for either cinematography, writing, best acting, direction, or even soundtrack. Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have... My negative thoughts.